That's no moon. Clear May 27. We are opening the magnetic field. Hello there, and welcome to Docking Bay 327. Today, we're going to look at how I finish my control panels on the back of my Falcon bench. It was quite a bit of work, some curves and angles that I had to work in, but all in all, I love the way it turned out. I did use some different type of buttons for the the blue and white tile shapes as well as the the dome uh, shapes you can see some of them back there in the background I'll take you through the design process how I built them painted them pinstriped them installed all of the buttons ran the electrical wiring and some more close-ups of it on the actual bench so Enough talking, let's get into it. On my recent trip to Galaxy's Edge, I got to see the Millennium Falcon hold area on the Smuggler's Run ride. Check out my video last week for more on the trip and some fun conversation with my daughter, Elena. I only had a couple minutes to really take it all in, but I made sure I touched the couch and the control panels to get an idea of how it was made. The control panel had all working buttons and switches, which was a nice confirmation for my decision to use actual buttons rather than the acrylic tiles. More on those later. I used reference pictures from there and the movies to create my own design in Illustrator to fit my space and included the pinstriping and rocker switches to give it that iconic look. So I started by making a template of the back of the bench out of cardboard and then transferred that to some leftover plywood I had. This would ensure that the panels would fit and mount properly on my bench. I cut out two so I would have the one inch thickness I needed to set the panels above the pads. I attached those together with some wood screws. This would give me a good solid frame to attach the entire structure to the bench once completed. I then cut a piece of half inch MDF for the actual base of the control panels and then made some dividers for each panel. I measured the space that I would have for each panel and then cut to size using quarter inch MDF for all of them. Next, I began measuring out and marking each spot where the buttons would go on each individual panel. I wanted to be sure that they would all line up to match my design. I purchased 10 of each of these blue and white square buttons on Amazon. I'll leave a link to those in the description below. The white ones came pre-assembled, which was nice because I had to assemble the blue ones and could use the white button as reference to make sure I put them together correctly. For the round buttons, I again went to Amazon and found these cool arcade buttons. I got a 5 pack of blue, red and yellow ones. I'll leave a link to these in the description below as well. The buttons all have a round stem, so I laid them out on the panel and marked the middle point on the side and bottom to create a center point for my drill. This square came in super handy as I marked them all out. I used this one inch spade drill bit, which is great for softer woods like MDF. However, MDF tends to blow out underneath and can weaken the integrity, so it's best to clamp it to the top of a scrap board to minimize this. I then did a test fit to make sure all the buttons lined up the way I wanted. The white buttons had a nub on each side of the bottom which wouldn't allow them to seat evenly against the board. So I simply sanded them off using my belt sander. The buttons all have a plastic washer that easily screws onto the stem and makes for quick installation. 
Next, it was Greebly time. Still my favorite part of any build, finding random parts and pieces to use for the aesthetic. Then I used my go-to sanding sealer for the MDF. When I used this for the sides of my bench and ottoman, I used a brush which left some unwanted lines in the texture. So I thought I would try a roller this time to see if it turned out any smoother. I still haven't perfected this technique so that the sealed finish is perfectly smooth like plastic, but the roller did get closer to the result I was going for. Now you can use a spray can to achieve this same result, but I just really hate the toxic fumes from those. Plus, this sealer does a really good job on the edges of the cut pieces, which is usually the most difficult area to prep for painting. Once the panels were fully cured, I painted them black and then added that iconic pinstriping. Not sure if you can see it here, but I used my square and pencil to mark out the lines as a guide. This helped me get a much straighter and cleaner application. You know, there's something about this process that I just find really relaxing and satisfying. I made the panels in two sections. The second section I built out to slant at an angle. It made things a little more complicated, but definitely worth the end result. I marked out all the buttons just like before and went through the same process of sealing, painting, and pinstriping as the first section. We interrupt this program for a great, grimly discovery! Now these are a great find. They are quick release spigots for a water hose. They have some neat ribbing on the sides that adds a nice detail. And they fit on the far left panel just perfectly. I removed the rubber covers so the paint would apply better. I also decided to modify them by cutting off part of the bottom section for a more even surface to glue to the panel. I painted them both a metallic silver and then applied a black wash so the details would show up better and of course give it that used universe feel. I added a bit of isopropyl alcohol to thin the paint so that it would run into all the cracks and crevices. And here they are installed. This has been a great Greeley discovery. Now it was time to wire up all the buttons and connect it all together. I kicked back with my custom soldering station and began the long, tedious process of cutting and stripping the wire for each and every button and LED. Oh, and assembling all the blue tile buttons.
Now, rather than solder all the wires together, I purchased some connectors that I could crimp to the wire and slide onto the positive and negative side of each button. I did decide to use a few regular LEDs in strategic places along the panels. These are pre-wired with the resistor which saves a ton of time. This was helpful since the entire wiring process took almost 10 hours over two days. I thought I was never going to be finished. The end result was super satisfying though and made all that work worth it. I followed the same steps for the slanted panels and it too turned out awesome. It was a really tight fit getting in behind the bench and mounting it all so I didn't get that part filmed. But here is the final result in all its Falcon inspired glory. So there you go, finally completed my bench with the control panels to kind of just top it off like icing on the cake. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, make sure and hit that like button and hit the alert bell so you'll be alerted when I push new content out. If you want to support the channel, go to our Patreon page and you can sign up for additional content behind the scenes looks etc and that will help me to expand on my videos even more so i appreciate those that have already subscribed to my patreon you guys are awesome so until next time build with what you know and figure out the rest